हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार्म वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज वेलकम डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन माई सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर फोर्टी वन दैट इज द डिसीजेज ऑफ द अम्बिलिकास एंड द एबडोमिनल वॉल सो फर्स्ट we will learn in this lecture the embryology the anomalies of the development of the umbilicus and the abdominal wall the vital intestinal duct the uraeus in the uraeus urinary fistula uraeal cyst uraeal sinus and omphalitis neoplasms of the umbilicus endometrioma secondary carcinoma omphalite or umbilical calculus discoloration of the umbilicus neoplasm of the abdominal wall before going to the anomalies of the development of the umbilicus and the abdominal wall in short i want to tell you the embryology of the umbilicus prior to the formation of the tail fold the caudal end of the embryonic area is anchored to the trophoblast by a connecting stock the formation of the tail fold carries the connecting stock on to the ventral aspect of the embryo so that it now assumes the permanent position of the umbilical cord prior to the formation of the tail fold a diverticulum arises from the dorsocaudal portion of the yolk sac and grows into the mesoderm of the connecting stock this outgrowth constitutes the alanto enteric diverticulum gradually the proximal parts of this diverticulum becomes incorporated in the hind gut and its distal portion persists as the alantoic canal or the alantois which then communicates directly with the ventral surface of the hind gut the portion of the hind gut which lies caudal to the communication forms of the ectoderm cloaca At the end of the pregnancy the umbilical cord is about 50 cm in length the umbilical vessels particularly the arteries are provided with a strong muscular coat which when contracts produces thickening of the media infolding the interna and considerable narrowing of the lumen thus the vessels are obliterated now the anomalies of development first the vital intestinal duct may persist completely and partially to give to the following conditions it gives rise to intestinal fistula which discharges mucus and occasionally feces then it is termed facial fistula second sometimes the major parts of the duct obliterates only a small part near the umbilicus remains patent this gives rise to the sinus discharges mucus becomes everted to form a raspberry tumor or adenoma sometimes the intestinal end of vital intestinal duct remains patent to form a mecal diverticulum the tip of the this diverticulum may or may not be attached to the umbilicus with a fibrous cord which represent the obliterated portion of the vital intestinal duct this cord may be potential danger for intestinal obstruction dear students now you can see the image on your screen is the vital intestinal duct there is a various deformities of the intestinal duct where it is connected with the abdominal wall bifurcation etc this is the vital intestinal duct patent vital intestinal duct typical images are seen on your screen fourth is the occasionally both the umbilical and intestinal ends become obliterated but not attached to the umbilicus but the central portion remains patent due to the accumulation of the secretion of the patent portion of the duct and intra intra abdominal cyst develops which is known as the enterocystoma fifth sometimes the whole of the ventral intestinal duct becomes obliterated but a band persists and small intestine becomes twisted around the band this is known as the vitello intestinal cord now the second abnormality of the umbilicus is the uraeus it contains three deformities urinary fistula uraeal cyst and uraeal sinus first urinary fistula only occasionally the uraeus which represent portion of the allantois may remains patent so that the fistula exists between the apex of the urinary bladder and the umbilicus This is urinary fistula of the umbilicus. Second is the uraeal cyst due to the patent mid portion of the uraeus with obliterated umbilical and vesical sites. Uraeal sinus umbilical end of the uraeus does not obliterate. Treatment is only excision. Dear students, you can watch a good picture on your screen. That is the A is a just cord. Second is a sinus and third is the uraeal fistula and fourth is the uraeal cyst. This is another image vital intestinal duct the vital intestinal sinus uraeal sinus uraeal cyst and the diverticulum is seen on your screen this is the typical uraeal cyst you can see on your screen now omphalitis infection of the umbilicus omphalitis is the 
Infection of the umbilicus may occur in babies and adults. It is generally a disease which results from poor hygiene. True omphalitis is infection of the stump of the umbilical cord. It results due to the improper and inadequate care of the umbilical stump. Bacterial infection occurs in the stump of the umbilical cord. In more than 50% of cases, the causative organism is the Staphylococcus. Less commonly, Streptococci, Escherichia coli, and Clostridium titani have been isolated from the infected stump of the umbilical cord. Now, the clinical features of the omphalitis are exuberant granulation tissues with inflammation of the surrounding abdomen. Dear students, you can see the image of typical omphalitis on your screen. Now, the complications like Abscesses of the abdomen wall, a localized deep abscess, septicemia when organisms enter the bloodstream through umbilical vein, portal vein thrombosis, serious sequel of this condition, jaundice due to infection reaching the liver via umbilical vein, extensive ulceration of the abdominal wall due to synergic infection almost like subcutaneous gangrene of abdominal wall. Now the treatment, 0.1% chlorhexidine application daily to the stump, antibiotics, IND, SOS according to the need and treatment is the only surgical treatment is that is the umbilectomy. Now the next point of our lecture is the neoplasms of the umbilicus. Umbilical adenoma, raspberry tumor or enteroteratoma have, are the same. It is not a typical tumor. It is due to the partially and occasionally a completely unobliterated vitello intestinal duct. Usually the duct near the umbilicus remains patent and the rest of the duct becomes obliterated. The mucosa of the patent duct prolapses through the umbilicus and gives rise to the raspberry like tumor which is soft pink tumor moist with mucus. Now the treatment, if tumor obliterated, a ligature may be tied around its base. Actually is umbilectomy with excision of the vital intestinal duct. You can watch the image on your screen. That is the typical umbilical adenoma, a image of the typical umbilical adenoma. This is the second image of the umbilical adenoma, third image of the same. Now the next entity of our lecture is the endometrioma. Ectopic patch of the endometrial glands may be seen in the umbilicus, usually seen in the dermis as the sideroferous glands open into the surface of the skin. Women between 20 to 45 years usually present with endometrioma. Treatment umbilectomy along with the endometrioma. And the next point of our lecture is the secondary carcinoma. This condition is manifestation of the late stage of the intraabdominal malignancies. Primary malignancy in the stomach, colon, small intestine, ovary or uterus. Tumor cells reach the umbilicus mainly via lymphatic root. Umbilical metastasis is present as a nodule at the umbilicus. Such metastatic nodule may ulcerate and bleed known as the sister Mary Joseph's nodule and treatment is excision. This is the typical picture of the secondary carcinoma spread through the lymphatic system. Now the next point of our lecture is the umphalic or umbilical calculus. Discommitted epithelium from the umbilicus, its sebaceous secretions mixed with hairs and fluff of the clothings. All these are sucked into the umbilicus and if not properly clean, may form a harsh tone which is known as the umbilical calculus or Omphalate. This condition is seen in those who are obese with very deep and narrow umbilicus and in those who do not keep themselves clean. What is more common are small concretions which give no trouble. When an umbilical calculus is formed, it may give rise to inflammation and umbilical abscess. Such infection may spread through the skin causing periumbilical cellulitis. Treatment to dilate the umbilical orifice and to extract the calculus. If abscess form to prevent recurrence, the umbilectomy is the treatment of choice. Dear students, the image on your screen is a image of the omphalate that is the umbilical calculus. This is the CT image clearly shown the radio opacity of the calculus on the screen. Now the next point of our lecture is discoloration of the umbilicus. Sometimes discoloration of the umbilicus may give a clue as to the intraabdominal diagnosis. These signs are Caput medici is the collection of distended vein around the umbilicus often seen in portal hypertension, spider angiomas seen in the chronic liver disease, small pathology seen in the thrombocytopenic or fat emboli, Killen sign is the bluish hue around the umbilicus seen in the hemorrhagic pancreatitis and with extensive destruction of the pancreas. A few stri may be seen in Cushing's disease around the umbilicus discoloration. Next point is the bruising at the umbilicus 
See in long standing hemoperitoneum that is the ruptured ectopic pregnancy. Just to the image of the discoloration of the umbilicus is on your screen. This is the another image. Now the next point is the neoplasm of the abdominal wall. First is the benign tumor. Benign tumors of the abdominal wall may arise from any of the elements contained in it. Lipomas are not uncommon and are treated by simple excision. Benign fibromas, neurofibromas and hemangiomas may be seen. These are treated in the same line as in other location the most important benign tumor is the desmoid tumor of the abdominal wall now the desmoid tumor this is the benign fibrous tumor which arises in the musculo aponeurotic abdominal wall especially below the level of the umbilicus it is more often seen in relation with the sheath of the rectus abdominis muscles through it is benign it is known for its recurrence that is why it is called as a recurrent fibroid or pegates now the etiology more common in women about 80% multipari probably due to stretching of the muscles of the abdomen in pregnancy pathology from slow growing mass non encapsulated is locally invasive treatment widely excision due to its tendency to recur excision with the surrounding margins of at least 2.5 cm of healthy tissue after excision the defect in the abdominal wall is made good by tantalum gauze and nylon mesh this tumor is moderately radio sensitive dear students the image on your screen is the image of the desmoid tumor this is the another image of the desmoid tumor dear students you can watch the good videos on the youtube regarding these points here is the end of our surgery lecture number 41 that is the disease of the umbilicus and the disease of the abdominal wall thank you